I'm going to explain what MCP is and how it can allow you to build AI agents faster and more efficient, or so we might think. I'm going to help you understand what it is, examine its limitations, discuss how it affects building AI agents using no-code tools, and then I'm going to show you how you can actually build agents with this and use it in NAN. So by the end of this video, you will understand what MCP is, why it matters, and whether it is the right choice for you. So what even is MCP? Well, MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, and this is a standard that is defined by Anthropic. And what it's trying to do is just make it easier for AI agents to communicate with other software systems. So despite some of the hype that you may have heard that's surrounding this topic, MCP really isn't a new technology. It's simply just a set of rules for APIs to follow that makes it easier for AI to interact with them. So I know that's a lot, but let's dive into that a little bit further. So why is this useful? Well, MCP solves a significant problem. Without it, AI platforms would need to integrate individually with hundreds of different software tools. So with MCP, they can actually integrate with just one with the protocol and instantly gain access to all the tools that implement it. So what MCP is actually doing is it's ensuring that all its tools properly describe all the ways that AI AI can interact with their system, you know, detailing the endpoints, how they receive data and what data that they are going to be returning as well. So the AI agent can then discover what's possible and make the appropriate tool calls as we are all familiar with the AI agents and everything. So how does MCP work in practice? Well, an AI agent needs to perform a task requiring external tools, let's say checking the weather. Also, the agent needs to connect to an MCP compatible service, and we will get into this in a little bit. It also has to have the service describing its capabilities in a standardized form. Additionally, the agent can then use these capabilities without needing specific integration code. So it's been compared to a USB-C port for AI applications. Just as USB-C connects various different devices in a standardized way, MCP helps connect AI models to different data sources and tools using just a single standard, if you will. Really quick, before we go on, I just wanted to mention that if you are looking to get a more hands-on approach to learning everything it is about AI and also get access to all of my resources and templates, weekly office hours with my team, in-depth tutorials on advanced topics, even technical help, and how you can find clients doing all of this stuff and using AI, selling AI, or just how to implement it into your own business, then check out our community. Link for that is down below. But let's go ahead and get on with the video. So let's discuss the limitations of MCP. Well, while MCP does sound pretty promising, there are some significant limitations that we do need to consider before actually jumping in. So the first one, MCP is stateful, not stateless. So this is perhaps one of the biggest issues. And I really just want to mention that this is all pretty much the theoretical. So MCP, it does require server sent events and maintains a stateful connection between the server and the client. What does that mean? Because it's all probably sounding like gibberish, I bet. Well, we could think of it like having a phone conversation conversation instead of text messages. So with a phone call, you know, this would be the stateful example. You need to stay connected the entire time. So most modern web services, they prefer stateless, however, you know, stateless connections, which are more just like these text messages. So you send a request, you get a response and the connection then closes. MCP needs to keep the line open, creating technical challenges as you might expect naturally. Number two is you can't use serverless functions. So because MCP requires those, you know, those stateful connections, you can't just deploy it in serverless environments. So serverless functions are like pop-up shops that just appear when needed and disappear when the transaction is complete, saving costs and resources. But since MCP just needs that phone call style connection, it can't really work with these serverless functions. And it's forcing the developers to use more resource and, and extensive server setups, which is super annoying. Number three is context window overloading. So when registering many different MCP tools with any particular agent, all those tool descriptions get added to the agent context window, which can overwhelm it. So you could think of this like trying to make a decision while 20 different people are shouting different options at you. So the AI can just get confused and distracted from the original task, which is just going to mess some things up naturally. Now let's go over MCP versus HTTP requests for AI agents, because this is really what it stacks up against. So either we're going to go with MCP or we're going to go with some HTTP requests to make these calls to our tools. So in the HTTP request, we have to actually input and learn documentation with MCP. It's just setting up everything inside the server. So some of the pros when it comes to actually using 
using HTTP requests is it works everywhere. It's well established, it's stateless, and it can use serverless functions. The cons, however, is it requires understanding different API documentation for each service. As I mentioned, it often needs complex authorization setups and it requires writing unique prompts for each tool. So you've definitely experienced it before. I experience it all the time. It's just an extra step to set up those HTTP requests and really tweak whatever tool you're using to ensure that you're making those calls properly. It's a super annoying thing that, you know, I wish we didn't have to do. And this is kind of something that MCP is solving. So some of the pros of using MCP is it has a standardized format, easier tool discovery, it's consistent data structure, and potentially less prompt engineering. The cons, as I have discussed earlier, going over the limitations, it requires stateful servers, it's deployment complexity, there are security concerns, and not all services have MCP implementation yet, which kind of sucks but for practical uses right now http requests they're definitely going to be more reliable and production ready i would say especially if you're dealing with services that just don't have mcp implementation yet but on the other hand if you're building a simple agent that just needs access to mcp compatible tools like web search google maps calendar whatever the standardization benefits might just outweigh the implementation challenges so i would really just recommend for doing this for maybe internal use or maybe testing so now that you actually understand and what MCP is, its limitations, and why you may want to use it, why you may not want to use it. I want to show you how you can actually install this within N8N. It's going to look a little bit different for all of you because I will advise you either need to have, I believe, the highest pro plan or one of the higher pro plans uh, starting around $60. And I'm not confident if you can even get it with that but I can guarantee you that you can use this as a self-hosted model instead. So right now I'm just hosting this on, as you can see, you can use Alestio. You can also use Railway, you can use Docker. I mean, Alestio is essentially just hosted on Docker or running that image. There's a few different options, but the first thing that you will start off with is you're going to come into the settings, make sure that you are on the latest plan or the latest update. You will see, it should say right here, update. Otherwise you will have to go into your settings and go to your plan and see if you're on the latest model if you are using the cloud version. But we are going to come into the community nodes and we're going to install any N hyphen nodes hyphen MCP. You can see that I already have it installed. I'm just gonna copy this. All you'll do, install, type this in, make sure you're clicking on the check mark and you'll install it. So obviously it's not going to allow me to reinstall it. It'll take a minute or two for that to actually install. This is what MCP actually looks like. So it's just a tool that we are connecting to our AI agent. But before we dive any further into actually using this, I want to show you the further steps that you will have to take to actually implement this because it's going to be more than just installing it through the community nodes. The first thing, if you are using Alestio, or maybe you're using Railway, or maybe you're using Docker, you will have to find your terminal. We're going to have to use the shell. We're going to open up the terminal and I'm going to rely on the documentation. I shall put a link for this down below in the comments or in the description. But we're essentially on GitHub and we're going to get the documentation for trying to install this on our terminal. So what we're going to do is we are just going to go into NPX and we're going to copy this right here. We're going to copy this. We're going to go into our terminal. First things first, we're just going to type out npm install hyphen g. And then we're just going to paste in exactly what we copied. So it's probably not going to work properly because I already have this installed, but let's see what happens. So you may have to do some tweaking if this does come up for you. And in this case, what we're going to type out is sudo apt install node.js npm. Once you run this, it'll then allow you to run this prompt right here. Once that's all finished up, we can close service. But before we do that, you will want to make sure that you install or have community nodes already implemented into your service. You may or you may not, but if you go into this update config, we're just going to come down here and we're going to make sure that we have this set as true. If you don't have anything that says N8N community packages, just copy this, pause the video and input this into your config. So it's just going to be N8N underscore community, underscore packages, underscore allow tool usage set that to true. You know, you could just put that down here. I put it on line 38. Then you're going to update and restart. And this is going to allow you to actually run these different nodes. The last part, I promise this is the final part of the setup, is going to just be connecting your credentials. Now, if you browse around in GitHub, you will find that there's going to be different tools that currently 
work for N8N, one of them being Brave Web Search, which is probably just going to be the most popular, I would imagine. And then we have Brave Local Search, but I'll allow you to explore this for yourself. What we are going to be using is we're just going to be using Brave Web Search. We're going to come into our search tab here and we're just going to find up Brave Search API, sign up for an account. It's going to be completely free. I'm going to log in myself. Once we're all logged in, you'll just go to API keys. You'll go to generate a new one and you'll hold on to that for a second. What we're going to do is we're going to come back into N8N. We're going to set up our credentials. Of course, I should probably back up and show you. We are going to grab MCP. So this should be a node that is appearing within your N8N. If it's not, then rewatch the video. Make sure you're following all these steps properly because you have to make sure you're following them to a T. So there's going to be the MCP clients tool and there's also just going to be the node. So if you could see the uh, two different options there. So we're going to search the tool for the time being. Now you can refer to the documentation or you can just pause the video. We're just going to copy this NPX right here. So first things first, the command is what we need to grab. We need to grab this Y and then also the string right here. So we're just going to copy this once again. We're going to come into here. We're going to type out NPX hyphen Y, type out that string. Now in the environments is where you are going to be putting your API key. So you just grab Brave API key. You put that in the beginning. So it should look a little bit something like this. Brave API key. And then you could hit enter and then put your API key in. So I'm not going to redo it and I don't want to show off my API key. So now let's get into how we can actually be using this for AI agents and making them more efficient. So if I pull this up right here, you can see I've already provided a prompt. Don't worry about that just yet. Essentially, what we want to do is we want our agent, you know, instead of giving it access to some HTTP node, we're going to give it access to those two different tools, the local web search and the other web search. And then we want it to actually execute one of those tools. So it's going to be just bam, bam, bam. We're just going to do one after the other. So I'll give you a quick example. If we're trying to run something, I'm going to say, I am starting a new business. I want to sell AI automations and I would like you to search my competitors. I would like to do SEO using AI and also run ads using AI. We have secured series A funding already. So see who my biggest competitors are that are doing well. So we're just going to try that. Just brainstorm something off the top of the dome, but let's see what it comes back with. Right away, you'll notice that it is first listing out the tools and then it's going to actually start executing it. So now that it's executing it, we should have a response back here in a few seconds. Of course, You'll also notice that we just attached a chat model. We're always going to be needing that. I found some valuable information about your competitors in the AI automation space, specifically focusing on SEO advertising. Here are some notable mentions. Eight AI SEO tools we absolutely love using in 2025. 24 best AI SEO tools and how to use in 2025. So this isn't too great of an example, but it is providing some of my competitors, just not as specifically as I would have hoped. So it's just finding different software tools, really. So we can read more about this on HubSpot, which I'm not going to dive into further. So we have Grammy down here. We have Market Muse in Phrase, I believe. Yeah, so it just listed out some of my different competitors. But now let's actually dive into what happened under the hood. First off, what we said is you are a helpful assistant who must first find the tools that are available. Then from the user query, you must work out which tool is going to be the best for the job based on the descriptions. And then after, you must use the execute tool that you're given access to and pass in the right parameter. So hypothetically, you would want to give this MCP tool access to 50, 100 different tools and really just say to the agent, okay, well, you're on your own. I need you to find the right tool based off of this user input. And I need you to determine which tool to actually execute. So it's really bringing in these environments and making everything just more efficient. Although you're going to run into the complexity of overwhelming the AI agent, which I mentioned way earlier. So there is still going to be a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of issues that you're going to incur while using these MCP. CP tools. So I just want to make that as crystal clear as possible. So when it comes to using anything for production, I highly advise you still use your HTTP nodes, but yeah, take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt, of course. 
do everything. But anyways, if we're showing off the MCP execute tool, all we're saying is from AI input selected tool. And then instead of typing this expression out, if you have watched my previous few videos, all you have to do is just press this little magic button. You know, I still haven't found a good name to describe that button. I'm just going to call it the magic button. And it's just going to define the expression for you. So you're not going to have to do anything. But in any case, I really just wanted to show off MCP for you guys because it's a new trend. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation on this being, you know, end all be all. And I'm sure within the next week, it's going to be especially overhyped. You know, just give it some time and you'll see. But I don't think everyone's going to mention the limitations that it actually has and why it may not not be the best for production and you know i could actually say right now it is not the best for production confidently but all, i don't think all these other videos are going to cover that so with that being said i hope you guys found some real value in this video go ahead and try this out for yourself you know explore some of the different tools that you can have access to it's pretty cool so go check it out for yourself and i thank you guys for watching again like and subscribe if you're interested in more videos like this then drop it down in the comments and if you are looking to get a more hands-on approach learning stuff exactly like this and how you can actually build your own ai company ai agency whatever you want to frame it as then check out the link below where you could join my community and i hope to see you there see you guys